few good reviews, 23, this is where I run down my thoughts on albums that have come out recently. It's been uh, just about a month since the last one, so I think there are 12 reviews in this one, about 12, so it's, it's, it, there's a lot. As always, let me know how you feel on these albums and um, what I think of these albums, if you agree, disagree, whatever. Hope you enjoy. Let's go! Otabeek Beaver is a noisy rock, noisy pop band from Japan, which is the place to get this kind of noisy rock music. Where else would you go? You're not going to go to friggin' Norwich. You're going to go to Japan. This is the place for this style of music. And it's it's good. This is good. This is some really, it's really catchy as well at points. It's like the vocalists are just so animated and lively that you can't help but just really like bob your head along to these banging tunes but the, the 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 replay value just isn't there for me i don't know what it is but it's just like decent overall um it's a good length the tracks uh, are filled with so much entertainment value but uh, yeah it just isn't really like sticking with me like that but it's definitely good quite conflicted on this steve lacy album which makes me feel like a hypocrite to be honest because i've been championing more solo work from the guy um, since that last internet album, which for me was just kind of whatever, but his bass grooves and his production is always impressive to me. So anytime he's involved in something, I I'm all for it. And here we are with a debut album under his name and I'm just like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> it's, just, it's just really frustrating. But, um, I still think his production is very good though. I mean, we're in a world where we're already getting so much... Um, features from the guy he's involved with so many people these days Solange Tyler creator that Raven Lene EP that came out I'm definitely excited for whatever she's gonna be doing in the future especially if he's involved with it but I think this album just lacked so much honestly like some of the tracks went on for way too long and his hooks and refrains were really quite weak at times. Some of the instrumentals were pretty good, but yeah. And that outro freestyle as well was terrible. That was such a terrible way to end off the album. And then he just tacks on that track from the Solange album. It's like, yeah, we've heard it already. Why do you need this here? It was really weird, weird choice from him, honestly. But yeah, still excited to hear him involved in more artists here on out, but um, this album wasn't really very good. This is a South Korean post-rock artist and I was ready. I was ready to give this one a glowing, raving review because their previous work is really quite good with uh, their album Difference being such a good uh, highlight for 2012, I think it came out. But this one's just okay, it's, it's just okay. Aside from the first track, which is amazing, uh, everything else after was just decent. I couldn't really keep my attention the whole way through, unfortunately. But I definitely recommend it, because there's so many people that love post-rock. So you, you've got to get on a band like this. They're really talented, definitely always going to be looking out for what they do in the future and stuff. But this one's just all right. Yeah, just not really interested in what Remo Drive are doing these days, unfortunately. Um, bear in mind, Greatest Hits is on my 2017 year and list still. I have a soft spot for that album. I think it's pretty damn good. But uh, I don't know, it just feels like on this album they're trying to recapture that like scuzziness, that sort of like bedroomy vibe that they had going on that one, the kind of like DIY sound. But it, it's just lost somewhere. The hooks just aren't there. There were some great hooks on Greatest Hits and I couldn't tell you a single one from this one. Like I couldn't recite one, couldn't tell you what many of the songs sound. All I really remember is that some of the tracks actually have quite bad vocals, which is something I didn't notice that Remo Drive had, Remo Drive had an issue with. This, this uh, type of music doesn't need the best vocalists in the world, but Separate Beds was just an awfully performed song vocally, I think. So yeah, just um, a shame, shame to see them kind of drop. But I, you can see that they're trying to get that, that old sound back, um, even after now being signed to a record label and stuff. that You can see they're trying, but it's just not clicking with me. Kate Le Bon. Ha. This, all right. I think at this point, music publications and me are just completely out of touch. And that's not to say that music publications are wrong. Or it's, not even, it's not even say I'm wrong or I'm right or they're wrong, they're right. 
I, I just feel like almost all the albums that they rave about these days are just not very good. Like, I can't get with this at all. And they'd love this. So many of them, you know, Stereo Gun, Consequence of Sound, Pitchfork, they all raved about this and I just don't get it. it, 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 it uh, the, the, I, I think some of the vocal melodies are cool. Um, you know, at points it's like some like stereo lab mixed with some Julia Halter and if you mix it in with like some Anna Meredith and maybe some of like the uh, classic 60s, 70s singers. Like if you blend it all together you get a, a pretty solid vocalist here but generally the tracks are just so bland, they're just... I don't get it. I, uh, I do quite like the blend of kraut rock and psych that's going on on this album, but um, I don't know, the vocals, the vocals, the vocals are just a bit boring. Like, I just find the way he presents his voice just really bland, so I'm just not enjoying this one that much. But I, I like the creativity. There's a nice creative element to the music here, but it, it just doesn't... Uh, really grip me but you know check out this nooms album i think it's definitely worth your time so yeah that's that's just how i feel so while lyrically uh stay dangerous was far worse than this this never hits those levels i don't think musically it's pretty much about the same but the only thing this time around is uh, is that i just get nothing out of these tracks in fact some of them sound like carbon copies of what he's already done like do your dance is literally just twist my fingers and throughout as well you've got a few kamea features she's collaborated frequently with yg already they're just not really doing anything new they're doing the same things over and over again the beats follow the exact same pattern on nearly every track and if they're not common to this album they sound common for yg because he's did them on my crazy life he did them on still brazy he did them on stay dangerous and now here again he's doing them he's just sounding the same all the time and it's just boring honestly that's the kind of that's kind of the worst offender of this album, because at least Still Brazy had some fun jams throughout. There were some great tracks on there. Um, even if in hindsight, it probably did get a bit overrated, even by me. But at least what he was doing on there is better than this. Like, I just can't really pick out anything that's interesting on here. Some of the beats, like I say, are pretty poor. The hooks are really bad throughout. Um, the only thing I would praise about this album is the final track, which is like a, a sort of like... Um, a love letter if you will to Nipsey Hussle where he's just on stage talking about how great of a person he was that was really nice to listen to um, perhaps if YG delved more into that for this album or even a future album I think I'd definitely be more interested than him doing the same thing over and over again I definitely do see the appeal in like the very heavy synthy poppy 80s cheese but like, it's just got to be done well, man. This just isn't done very well at all. Um, Two Door Cinema Club just go way too in with the funk. Like there's just way too much like cheesy funk going on here. And it, it just sounds really tacky. And the vocalist, when he reaches his falsetto, it's just like the worst Tame Impala song you could imagine. And I, I'm not even that big of a fan of Tame Impala. So listening to this guy, is just ugh, unbearable at points but yeah there's there's an open mic eagle feature on here by the way the way that tr the way his it just it's such a mess the song keeps like stopping and starting and he's just rapping it's honestly one of the worst guest features i've heard all year and mike is a great rapper i do not know how he got involved with this but jesus christ that verse was horrific um, yeah, this is, uh, this is pretty bad, but I do see why people would have fun with this type of stuff. It's just not really that kind of thing for me. This is just some lovely music. Kishibashi has made a very nice On The Ears album here. It isn't really on the forefront though. It's not as good as his 2012 album. 2012 album was really good and a highlight for, um, the year overall, I think, but this one is just too soft at points. Some of the tracks don't really stand out. 
uh, it doesn't have much of like a, a track identity, like flow flowing. Like it, it, it kind of just feels like the same track repeated in a lot of ways. But I do think the closing track is really lovely. And um, yeah, it's, it's just a soft listen. I think a lot of people could end up adoring this actually, but it just ends up being pretty decent. Uh, he can do better than this, I think, but it's nice. This Faye Webster album, it's okay. It's all right. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's decent. I like her like raspy, odd delivery. It's very soft and somber. Actually reminds me quite a bit of the singer Andy Schauf. If you've never listened to Andy Schauf and you like this Faye Webster album, I'd say try it out, they have a very similar style. It's quite nice on the ears, um, quite like ASMR-y, I suppose. Um, but yeah, I think it's it, it's okay, it's pretty decent. I think the father feature is so out of place, but it somehow works. I do not know how. Uh, it, it's odd, but it, it's kind of cool. And I really like the, uh, the lyrical arc of uh, right side of the neck. The second track in the album, I actually think that's really quite uh, clever, honestly. But um, yeah, it, it just doesn't really grip me the whole way through. Like, I just wish she emoted her voice a little bit more because uh, she just kind of falls into the background quite a lot of the time. And the instrumentals aren't quite like as meaty as I, I do want them to be, but it is a nice, soothing listen. So definitely check it out. This Gold Link album, man, it's just so empty. There's just nothing to these songs really like yeah, they're, they're chilled out. They're vibey very summery You know, they, they, they just like have that feel of like, you know, you're sat at a beach with a cocktail in your hand or whatever but um, They just they just do nothing at all like I, I can't Get anything out of these songs gold link as a performer is just really mediocre like he can't he 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 just he just can't grip me like he can't grip my attention. The features on here all just sound like Sway Lee or The Weekend. Like honestly, I had to keep checking to see if either of those were on the songs, and they weren't. They were just so blatant in their voices. Like they just had no distinct personality to them whatsoever. Even the push uh, the Pusha T and the Tyler Creator features just flew over my head. Like this is nah, I just wasn't into this at all. Another good project from Sean here. Um, things are just improving each time. And it's funny because this one's technically a mixtape. And I feel like even though it's a mixtape and sometimes people think, well, mixtapes aren't as good as albums, I actually think this is slightly better than the album that I put out last year because I just think the beats are starting to sound better. His rapping is tighter too, because he, he, on his previous work, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, he'll often kind of fall into that Milo type of rapping where it's kind of like um, just talking or spoken wordy and you know, you kind of just end up like rambling a lot, which I liked on his previous work. But this time around, I think he's starting to sound better when things are just a little bit more focused. The songs are a little bit shorter. The friggin' banger that comes on this album as well. Oh man, he, he Sean, you gotta do more of these. Uh, I, I, mate, a mixtape of bangers just straight up banger after banger, I think you would absolutely kill. Like, I, 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 it, it would be fucking good. But yeah, th that track is a major highlight, but even every other track on here too is good. Definitely check this out. I mean, it's quite low key. Um, Sean's singing, once again, is just getting better too. Um, it's kind of got that emo-ish tinge to it, which I know a lot of people like at the moment. Um, and yeah, I'm just excited to see where he takes things next. I'm sure there'll be something out soon once again because he's very prolific with his output. But like I say, things are just getting slightly better and better each time to the point where eventually I think he's going to put out something really, really good. Pretty much just some subpar pop music produced by Mark Ronson with a lot of uh, less than average guest features on here. I do like the Angel Olsen one though. That was a good track. I suppose the Miley Cyrus one actually works kind of well too, but um, other than that, there's, uh, there's 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 nothing here at all. It's so dry and it's so sterile. So these features, man, like the Camila Cabello track, just goes way over my head. I couldn't even couldn't even tell you what it sounds like. It's just. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. How well? Have a good day. Goodbye.